Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in this week's video we got a little tool making project. Uh, I have a slitting saw arbor here that uh, has served me well for several years but uh, I want to make one today that's got a longer reach right in here in this area. Let me turn over to the mill and show you uh, uh, why a longer reach is needed in here and where it'll be useful. The thickness of this shoulder right here on the uh, arbor is pretty much dictated by the size of the hole uh, in the slitting saw. Let me get this apart right quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. These slitting saws have a one inch hole. So again, this outside diameter here is, is dictated uh, by the size of that uh, the hole in the splitting arbor. So this right now measures 1.24. I think we can go down a little bit smaller with this one. I'm going to go down to one point. Uh, that's 200 40 thousandths there. We're going to go down to 1.2 and that'll give us a hundred thousandths on each side. But this diameter, this fits up into a three-quarter inch collet, R8 collet. And as you can see, there's considerably uh, almost a half inch difference between the spindle, the collet holder in the spindle, 1.7 versus 1.24, 1.2. So that will be a half inch difference in this, which with a longer reach will mean that I can get a quarter inch more depth cutting into the workpiece. Tom Lipton did a video several years ago uh, talking about slit, slitting saws and he made a comment in there that when you're when you're slitting you're best to go ahead and get as much depth as possible instead of trying to take little small passes. Recently I tried to cut a piece of three quarter inch aluminum and had to make two passes one on the front side and one on the back side whereas if I'd had this extended arbor here uh, to get out of the way of the uh, the collet holder and spindle I could have made it all in one pass. I've made a very crude drawing. I'm not sure how well you can see it. But what we're going to do, the part that goes up in the collar will be 2.6 inches long by 3 quarters wide. This entire length will be 5 inches. Uh, this part will be 1 inch, so that will give me 4 inches more depth. Then we'll mill out this in here and thread the inside for a 5 16 24. I've got a piece of uh, mystery metal here that's 1 and 3 8 diameter. I'm going to start with that. This come in a lot of stuff I recently picked up, uh, tools and uh, some material. So we'll turn over to the lathe now, face this in, and then turn it down to size. Okay, so let's go ahead and chuck the workpiece up pretty close now. We'll face this front right here and put a center in. Alright, so now we can uh, uh, put the center in our tail stock and pull our workpiece out. We'll be using a live center for this. And remember, we wanted about 2.6 inches for the uh, uh, sleeve or the uh, portion of the arbor that will go up in the collet. Then we wanted a 5 inch extension. And then we're going to go about another inch or so uh, for the plug that uh, uh, will go ahead and turn the locking plug at the same time. 
in anyhow we're going to get about nine inches worth to begin with or so we'll stick out about 10 inches here bring our live center in that nine inches will give us uh, plenty of extra for saw cuts and the like that's it we're going to have to extend out a little bit touch off right there zero out the z-axis and come in the nine inches and we'll set our um, carriage stop right there all right we're going to touch off and make a pass and I tell you what as much turning as we're going to have on this I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, the coolant close by get it primed up since this coolant serves coolant pump serves three different machines I'll be sure the flow is turned off at the other two and I don't need to flood this all I need is just a, a little bit running on there to keep it cool Touch off right there. Set some zeros. And I'm going to take about 40 thousandths in this first cut. measurement here it's 1.323 and we're looking for 1.2 so we got a about 122 thousandths to go and that's a little bit rough I'm not sure if that's the material I think what I'll do is while we're stopped here go ahead and put a, a new insert tip out yeah that one's pretty well worn all right got a new insert in that was the last tip on on that on the one that's in there and i realize uh changing that will change my measurements but close enough now we can take a sixty thousandths and then get another measurement I'm not sure how well you can see that in the camera, but that is leaving a much, much better finish. Point two sixty four, and we wanted one point two, so we'll go in sixty more thousands. We'll do a sanity check. One point. Oh, I believe my battery is going bad. It was starting to flicker, but one point two oh one. So, inch and a half, or a thousandths and a half. ready to measure off 2.6 inches from this end 
Our zero should be the same, yep. Come out 2.6. Okay, and this depth on this, this needs to go down to three quarters of an inch. And that is, this is somewhat critical in that it needs to be a good fit in the collet. I'll make a couple passes on this and then we'll get a measurement. Alright, I'm going to switch back over to the analog. I think what was happening with my digital calipers a minute ago, I looked back at the uh, video to see if I actually uh, uh, stuck them under the coolant, but there was, there was moisture on them, so I'm going to let, have to let them dry out a bit. That's 1.049048 right now. So we got almost 300 thousandths left to go. Okay, the micrometer shows we've got about 65 more thousandths to go, so I'm going to take 40 thousandths, and then we'll make a final pass. It says 26 more thousandths to go. 777 is what that's reading now, so that's 27 more thousandths to go. Again, I want to keep this one pretty close. It looks right on the money. All right, for a sanity check, we'll just I back the uh, tailstock out of the way. We'll try to call it on there, and that's a good fit. That'll clamp down very good on that. So I'm going to carry this over to the bandsaw, cut off the length that we need for our, for our arbor. Then we'll actually come back and work on the plug side. All right, before we start working on our plug in, let me put the arbor back in, and let's put a little bit of relief on these two shoulders. Probably should have done that, or could have done that, before I took it out of the lathe to cut it off. Alright, that's got a nice little chamfer on there now. Alright, we'll come back to this piece shortly. For right now, let's put our uh, stock back in. Now we're going <clears> to <throat> face this off, turn a shoulder uh, like this on the end of it that just fits, that the slit and saw will just fit over. As far as drilling this and counterboring it, we'll go over to the mill uh, probably as the last step and do that. One more little pass. Alright, I said we'd go over to the mill later to drill that, counter boy it, but we're going to go ahead and drill it here. Then when I get to the mill, all I'll we'll have to do is use a, a pin uh, to find center, gauge pin. So 
So I'll get the chuck in, real chuck, right quick. And that should be a 5 16 drill. Double check to be sure. Now we want to go in about an inch. So I'll just roughly mark that on the drill bit. Somewhere in that area there is plenty good. Alright, now let's get set up to, uh, to turn our shoulder. And again, we want it to be just the thickness, or just so it just goes in the saw arbor, which should be, or saw hole, which should be one inch. We'll set our zero. And we want the depth of this to be, I believe that was a half inch. One and a half inch. And as always, tighten down our carriage stop. <clears throat> I'm sorry, half inch. It's 145 thousandths over, so we'll go in 40, 60. That's still about 69 thousandths. I want to creep up on this though. This is 18 more thousandths. Alright, that's one saw blade. Let me try another one, a different manufacturer. All right, I'm happy with that. All right, we'll come back to this piece a little bit later. I'll cut it off on the bandsaw, and then we'll meet over at the mill again, probably the, the last part of this project. Now what we're going to do with this piece is cup it out like this is, bore it out. First thing I'm going to do is drill it for the 5 16 use the uh, 5 16 24 tap drill and drill that out. That will give us a starting point for the boring bar to reach in there. All right, this is the tap drill for 5 16 24. And I'm going to drill it just about, I'm going to drill it the full amount of flutes that's on the uh, drill bit it's, itself. And then I may even drill it more uh, after we get it uh, bored out. Because it'll be tapping into a, a blind hole. Smallest boring bar I've got is a uh, five or is a three eighths, which is considerably larger than the uh, hole we just drilled in there. What I'm going I won't would like to bore it with a half inch boring bar. So what I'm going to do.
All right, I cut this uh, our plug piece off of the uh, work stock. Uh, it's still got to be faced uh, to length. But this turned out to be 996 thousandths. Remember, the saw blade uh, hole was one inch. This right now is at 965 thousandths, so we've got about 31 more thousandths to cut out. I'm going to take 20. Again, I want to creep up on this. And when I get down close like this, I always like to make spring passes before I do any more measuring. Let's take five more thousandths, or about seven more thousandths, maybe. <laughs> Look at there. I am happy with that. And the fact that this bottoms out without a blade in there assures me no matter how thin of a uh, slit and saw that I get, I've got plenty of, uh, I've still got plenty of tightening power. So now I'm going to, of course, remove the boring bar and we're going to put the drill bit back in and drill that out, drill and tap it. And like I said before, I've got plenty of length in there, so I'm going to drill this pretty deep. All right, let's get, create just a little lead in for that thread. Of course, we're going to start with the taper tap, a little rapid tap, juice on, turn our RPMs way down, finger on the stop button. Now we'll switch to the bottom tap. Same scenario, a little rapid tap. Low RPMs, I think I'm turning, let's see. That's 144 RPMs. Finger on the stop button. Reverse the lathe and out we come. Alright, one more little thing we want to do while we're right here. But just a just clean up these edges just a little bit just to remove the sharp corners. Sharp edges. Hard to find a corner on a round piece. Here's our long reach arbor. Now we're going to go over to the uh, mill and a couple final steps. One, we're going to put some flat sides on this just to hold it in the vise when I get ready to tighten the uh, that uh, soggy head cap screw or take it back out. So we'll put just a couple flats on each side of this. Also at the mill, we'll counterbore this for the uh, soggy head cap screw. Over at the mill now, and we got our arbor mounted in a uh, 5C collet, uh, three-quarter inch collet, uh, in the uh, in a collet block, square collet block. 
we're going to put a flat on each side. I'm going to go down about 160 thousandths on each side. So that should leave us about a 7 eighths uh, uh, flats on there. Use a 7 eighths wrench. Or as I said earlier, we can put it in the vise. Using the same half inch end mill we use to make that countersink in here to start our bore. So there's zero. I'm going to start with about 50 thousandths and see how this import end mill will do. I've got the edge of the collet block even with the edge of the uh, jaw on the vise. Good as that cuts, I'm going to go ahead. Now let's see, we'll make it in three cuts. Hundred eighty flat. There's no need to put four flats on there. Uh, if I need to get to this while it's in the uh, while it's in the mill, I can easily rotate the the mill head, the mill quill. All right, so let's go back up to about fifty thousandths. And hopefully a 7 8 wrench will fit loosely over that. Alright, now we're going to get set up to counterbore our uh, plug that will go in this end. Okay, off camera on the lathe, I faced the end of our plug, got it cleaned up, got a nice tamper on there. I'm going to set this in the uh, mill now. And I've got a, a countersink bit in. I think you can see the tip of this is the same size as, as our hole, 5 sixteenths, and then this will be clearance for the uh, cap. I mentioned before about get, using a uh, gauge pin to find locate the, the center of this, but don't really need it in this situation because the counter bore itself We'll locate the center force. So we'll lock down right there. We'll zero out the DRO. ZX is DRO. And remember, on a socket head cap screw, the, the height of the head is always the same as the diameter of the threaded part. So this is a 5 sixteenths. 5 sixteenths, let's see what that actually it's 312 and a half thousandths. So we're going to go down about 315 thousandths. That's a zero. To be sure, I'll set my uh, zero on the DRO. Come out here. And yes, that's below the center line. We need to put just a little bit of chamfer on this as well. Right, so there we have our nice countersink. Let me grab a socket head cap screw right quick. All right, let's turn back to the workbench and do a quick recap. You know, very, I very seldom start a project out with a clean workbench, but today. For today's project, I actually had the workbench completely cleared off. And so I decided when I started this project, any tool that I used, I would leave it out until I finished the project and then just take kind of a personal inventory of what was required to make the piece. This is what our finished product looks like. This, of course, will go up in the collet, in the mill, and we have now a distance of basically 0.9 inches depth that we can cut. So we could easily cut into a 7 8 inch thick piece of material uh, without having to make two cuts. It's long enough down so it gets out of the way of the, uh, the uh, collet holder in the spindle. And this is the way our plug goes in with the socket head cap screw. 
in no particular order of what it required tools required was a one inch and a two inch micrometer a caliper countersink a uh, starting bit counter bore five sixteenths bit five sixteenths tap drill taper tap and a bottom tap half inch uh, end mill and we put the slot in here and also started our bore with call it to hold that in the in the mill uh, six inch rule and a 12 inch rule a, uh, a hex key set for the socket head cap screw another hand countersink 5c collet block and spanner wrench 5c collet and lathe tools we used a turning tool we used a facing tool we used a tool for uh, chaffering and we used a boring tool boring bar as I said I got some coolant in my uh, shards digital micrometer but it seems to be I don't know whether you can see it it's still flickering a little bit I thought that was indicative of bad battery but I changed the battery and it's still doing the same thing so it's got some moisture in it I'm just gonna have to let it dry out and hopefully that will fix the problem so stay tuned to the channel and you'll see this in use I'm sure numerous times in upcoming video Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.